Hey guys, this is Krista. I wanted to talk to you guys today about three paranormal stories that happened to me. And I was at different ages, kind of close to the same age. Um, but I just wanted to share it with you guys. I don't have very many paranormal stories, so uh, they're short. So I'm gonna put three together. But I am the queen of scary nightmares. <laughs> so if you ever wanna hear nightmare videos from me or explain my bad dreams, then leave a comment below telling me that you want that. If you hear anything weird, it's my dog playing with her toy, or it could be a ghost. You never know. Also, I'm drinking out of my Jekyll and Hyde mug. And if you guys don't know what Jekyll and Hyde is, it's like a spooky story. And there's a restaurant in New York called Jekyll and Hyde. It's like a really cool actor-based restaurant. So there's a lot of actors that run around and they talk to you and they put on shows while you're eating and you can explore the whole place. If you check it out, it's in um, Times Square in New York. It's really cool because the back says, drinking out of it because it's kind of spooky. <laughs> the back says, in each of us, two natures are at war, the good and the evil. Dr. Henry Jekyll. I don't know. I just thought it was spooky. Went with our spooky theme for the day. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Look at my blinds making this light though. <laughs> Should I move it? No, it's kind of spooky. We'll leave it. So I have my phone and I'm going to um, tell you guys the stories. I just have like names written down of what I called the stories. So first I will start with my youngest age when this happened. I think I was about... I don't know. I think I was about eight or nine. So a little backstory before I start this. My great grandpa, I called him dead Ed. So like dad, dad, second generation. My dead Ed died in my mom's house. And um, he didn't die in like a terrible, scary way. He just passed away in his sleep in my mom's old bedroom. <laughs> That's where the story starts. One day, me, my mom, and one of our friends were out on the back porch at my mom's house. And I was, again, 10 years old. We were just hanging out. I was getting too many bug bites on my feet. It was summertime and I had flip flops on. So I decided to go into my mom's room where I had left my sneakers. And mind you, this is the room where my dead Ed died. So I remember going into the room. I had just sat down on the bed and I was getting ready to put um, socks on. And just a little more backstory. My dead Ed would always yell yoo-hoo from across the yard to my grandparents and my mom and everybody else. Um, when he was alive and he would tell him to come over and he would offer actual yoo-hoo, <laughs> the, the chocolate drink, um, to everyone. And, uh, always gum too. I don't know why <laughs> he would offer yoo-hoo and gum. But anyway, it's important to remember that he would yell like yoo-hoo, like hello from across the yard. Anyway, so I was putting on, uh, socks before I put on my sneakers. So I'm pulling on my socks. And then I hear this weird, faint whispering. And I can just like picture in my head that I was facing her closet door. He had died um, on the opposite side of the room. He like died on the left hand side. That's where the bed was. And I remember um, being told that he was just passed away on his bed. I'm sitting there. I put on my socks. I go to put on my sneakers. But before I can even slip my foot into this, the first sneaker, I faintly hear something from my left ear. And I hear, you And I booked it out of that room so fast, mortified. What's scary now thinking about it is that I heard that from my left ear and that would have been the direction where the bed was, where he passed away. And that was just so creepy. I swear on my life it was him. It was so weird. I booked it and I ran down the hallway and I ran out to the back um, sliding door out onto the deck where my mom and her friend were. I was freaking out. Oh my gosh, I heard him. I heard dead Ed. I heard him. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I said, I heard him. He said, you who? And I like ran out. I was like in socks and no shoes. They kind of laughed at me because I was a, I was young. I was, what, what did I say? I was eight or nine or nine or 10. And I think that they, 
thought like, oh, maybe she heard us talking outside and that's what she heard or like maybe the TV was on, but I swear the TV was not on. I did, I could tell the difference between them like laughing outside and me hearing my dead Ed saying, yoo-hoo. It was faint and it was his voice and I just, no, I know it was him. And that sounds so crazy, but <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just had this feeling it was him. It was weird um but that's really all there is to that story i told my mom in later years like i swear it was him and she like believes me <laughs> but it was just so surreal i hadn't had any experience like hearing him later on or throughout my life or in the house but um i did have other weird things happen in the house which brings me to story number two which is called bedroom makeover. So this one I remember for sure I was in eighth grade. So for eighth grade for Christmas time as a big gift my mom decided that she was going to redo my room. I used to watch um, Extreme Makeover Boys vs. Girls on TV like all the time. I don't know if anyone remembers that show but it was basically like a home makeover show but for a kid's room. A boy and a girl or a girl and a girl or and a boy and a boy would swap rooms and then redo those rooms for each other and um, it was just like this big reveal show and the kids would get really excited about it uh, so I was like I want my room redone and she's like I'm gonna do it for the month of December about I think I think the beginning of December until Christmas my mom locked me out of my room <laughs> I slept in the living room for the month because I knew it would be totally worth it once I got to uh, go back into my room and it was all like changed and everything. And you know what I remember just now, which I guess is creepy too, I remember falling asleep in the living room and having the, like you know when you're in the stage of falling asleep but you're not quite asleep yet? Well I remember being at that point and hearing the Goosebumps theme song in my head <laughs> and it really bothered me and I'd be like I just wish I was in my room already because I'm getting scared in the living room and it was all dark anyway so I was sleeping in the living room and I was not allowed in my bedroom so one day I'm coming home from school and I walk down the road from my bus stop uh, every day so my mom wasn't home this day when I came home so I'm walking from the bus stop it's like a cliche, like perfect setup for a horror movie. It was dark, it was rainy, it was foggy. And I remember I stopped for the mail at the end of the driveway and I walked up the steps into the door and I was like looking at the mail. I remember specifically walking through to the dining room table, facing the kitchen. So if I'm facing the kitchen like this, the hallway is back this way where my bedroom is. So I'm looking at the mail facing the kitchen, and then out of nowhere, I hear a woman singing. What is that? I realize it's the radio in my bedroom. Now, no one's home. I can't go in my bedroom, and why would I? Being in eighth grade, I'm young, I'm a girl, I'm scared in my house by myself when it's rainy and foggy out <laughs> and dark. Um, I just remember hearing the radio and then I finally make out what the song is. And it was Christmas time, so a Christmas song was playing. And it was, Hear how the bells, sweet Christmas bells, all seem to say. And that was the end for me. The end for me. I, once again, booked it so hard out of that house. I flung the door open and I ran out, I dropped the mail on the floor. Luckily my grandpa lived next door. Not the, not the great grandpa that died, the, my other grandpa. He lived next door. This is my dog, Mitty. <laughs> I think she's scared because I'm talking to the camera. I ran to his house and I said, someone's in the house, someone's in the house. And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, there's music. I'm trying to talk. Oh, I just dropped my coffee, oh my gosh. Tissues! I'm cleaning my coffee, don't worry. Hey, I'm just gonna hold this for a minute. 
Anyway, my grandpa's like, what do you mean someone's in the house? Because he doesn't really believe me either. And I said, listen, I went home. I'm not allowed in my bedroom. You know that. There is music playing in there. Someone's in the house. And he's like, okay. And he grabs this big flashlight. And it's like really heavy. And basically you could kill someone with it <laughs> if you wanted to. So he walks me back to the house. And he says, stay in the living room. So I stay in the living room. And he gets the key to the bedroom door. And he opens it. And he goes inside. And nothing. Nothing. He saw the radio. And he turned it off. That was it. <laughs> the only explanation that we could come up with is that maybe there was some sort of alarm on the stereo um but we talked to my mom about it and she said no i didn't do any of that i like so if it did happen to be an alarm it was pure accident that it came on and if it wasn't an alarm then it was probably my dead ed <laughs> and turning it on trying to talk to me again that was that story Really nothing came of it. Um, I, I went into my room on Christmas Day. It was amazing. My mom redid it. It was purple and silver and black and there were stars everywhere. It still looks like that now. Um, but it was amazing. Orlando Bloom posters on the wall. <laughs> it was really cool. Um, but besides that, I never had any other weird experiences in that room. But, wow. You know what? I just thought about it. How that's like... By the time I tell this next story, that's three rooms in that house that I had a weird experience in. That's weird. Alright, so the last story is about, um, I don't want to say tarot cards because it wasn't tarot cards. It was, um, fortune teller cards. They look like regular playing cards, but they have, like, some pictures on them but they are numbered and they come with like a little booklet that tells you what each card means um i don't remember exactly how they were different from tarot cards i wish i had them right now so i could show you but i don't because after this experience i made my mom hide them from me <laughs> because i didn't want them anymore this was also at christmas time that is so weird finding all these connections <laughs> anyway i was in the living room and it was christmas day my mom and me always woke up really early on Christmas. We were, we were like the kind of people that would like sneak into each other's rooms and be like, are you awake? <laughs> and be like, yeah, let's go in the living room and open presents. We were in the living room opening presents. And at the time I was really into uh, stuff from Hot Topic. I still really like Hot Topic. I think it's a cool store, especially for like band merchandise. But um, I was really into Hot Topic and like, kind of like witchy things and like being really cool and edgy. So my mom got me a tarot card. I want to keep saying tarot cards. It wasn't. It was fortune telling cards because that's what it said on the front. It was like this blue book. It was like a hardcover book and you'd open it up and the stack of cards is in it and on the other side was um, the little booklet that told you how to read them. I opened them up and of course I was so totally stoked that I got them. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna learn how to read these. I'm gonna tell my friends like their fortunes and everything's gonna come true and I'm gonna be a witch. <laughs> and like, I was just super excited. So I opened it, I looked at it for a little bit and um, then I put it on the couch. So like an hour passes and my mom's like, listen, we woke up so early, I need to take a nap. And I'm like, yeah, me too. So she's like, I'm gonna go in my bedroom. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna hang out in the living room and nap here. So she went in her room, I was in the living room. And I remember I wasn't asleep. I know for sure that I wasn't asleep, but I was laying on the couch. And I was laying next to the book and I was closing my eyes for a while, so maybe this is like me being like really tired. We had one of those recliner couches where you would like flip the, the um, lever on the side and the legs would go up. So in the, mi the middle of those couches are always higher. So imagine it shaped like this. The book is leaning against it like this. I open my eyes. I look at the book. 
I'm thinking about reading it, looking at it, picking it up. And the book is leaning like this. So you would imagine like, oh, if it's gonna fall, it's gonna fall this way, cause that's just gravity, things go down. But it didn't. It went like this, up onto the couch. And I have never been so terrified in my life. That book moved upwards turning while it went up. My mind was boggled. I couldn't understand how how that would happen. I just remember immediately screaming. And then I got up and I ran to my mom's room. And I was like, mom, the book moved, the book moved. And she is asleep. And I feel so bad now thinking about that. But she was asleep and she's like, what are you talking about? And she's terrified because her daughter is running in her room scared screaming I just explained to her what happened like I just explained to you we went out into the living room and looked at it and the book was right back where it was before it moved now have I thought maybe I was tired and I just saw that because I like had just opened my eyes maybe yeah and I thought maybe I was more asleep than I thought I was maybe I was in that dream awake state and didn't realize it yeah, that could be true, but there was just something weird about it that made me think that wasn't normal, that wasn't natural, and I didn't make that up. So whether if it was my mind playing tricks on me or if it was um, just me being tired or me really seeing it. I don't know. I can't explain it. So thank you guys so much if you got this far, if you've been enjoying the stories. Um, if you want to see, again, stories like this, if I have any paranormal stories to tell in the future, I definitely will share it with you. Um, if you have any questions for me, maybe I'll do a question and answer video. Um, if you want to see videos about my nightmares, because I have a book of those. I literally write my nightmares down. So if you want to hear like story times on my nightmares, though they're not true, they are scary. Leave it in the comments below if you do want to see videos like that from me. And if you enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. <laughs> so that's really all I have to say. I um, hope you enjoyed this video and until next time. Bye.